So this morning, we, the message we are going to talk about is uh, <laughs> um, the, our theme is the wisdom of God. So let me call this one part one, and next week we go to part two uh, and see how Holy Spirit wants to lead us. So part of the wisdom that we want to focus on today is let God do it. Let God do it. That's one of the, one of the best wisdom you can exercise to run your life by telling yourself, I want to let God do it. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 7, 1 Corinthians 2, 7, which is our, our, t- our, our text for the month, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. We are people of wisdom. We, we, we walk on the wisdom of God, wisdom of heaven. And um, part of that wisdom that we need to use to operate our life is to let God do it. Let God do it. Let God do it. Something happened some time ago. I was a little bit uh, agitated, or let me say I was angry, uh, based on the way I was uh, uh, that particular organization uh, and do my case. So I was thinking of fighting them. You know, uh, for me, I, I, I uh, before I became born again, we, we do that's the way we fight in the world. But when I became born again, I learned a new way of fighting. You know, so I, I fought so many battles in this in this country. Uh, I'm telling you the truth. I fought an organization to the court before. I fought them for them to different courts. I pursued them. I pursued them. You know, uh, I, I I fight, but I fight intelligently. I fought so many. Uh, I fought and appear and appear and appear and appear and appear. Um, so this particular case, uh, I was thinking of fighting in the way I used to fight. I just remember the old days. I can fight these guys because uh, I fought some of them before, uh, taking them to court. And uh, um, if when the when the judge say the case was against me, I say happy. Say, I will pursue all of you, you know. Uh, so and. Uh, the word now came and said, let God do it. Let God do it. Said, okay, let me just release and let them go. And God said, after all, I've given you an alternative. Let them just go. Said, okay. God has interceded for them. Let me just let them go. You know. So, let God do it. Now came to my mind on this week. So, when we say, let God do it, and we're talking to a congregation like this, and those who are watching online, it's going to have different meaning and different applicants to individual. But it's a good thing that in your life also, you tell yourself, I will let God do it. So this morning, let's kind of look into the word, let God do it, or the statement, let God do it. How can it be applied to individual person? Before we go into how to let God do it. Number one, when we say let God do it, to somebody, what we are saying is, let God shape you as he desires. Let God shape you. Let God give your life a shape that he has chosen before you are created. Let God give your life a shape. Don't make a shape for yourself. Don't make yourself to be the person God has not created you to be. Let God do it. Let God design you. Let God fashion you. Let God lead you. Let God train you. In, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 6, he say, O house of Israel, can't I do with you as this potter? Say the Lord, behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand. Oh, as of history, God say, you are a clay in my hand, and I'm a potter. I will decide the shape I want to give you. As a child of God also, when we say, let God do it, we are telling you that, let God determine your shape. Let God determine who you are going to be. Let God determine how he's going to train you. If, for example, God has decided you should be an accountant, don't be a doctor. Let God do it. Let God shape your life. If God has decided that you are going to be a receptionist and you are going to succeed, don't try to be a medical doctor. Let God do it. Don't train yourself on what God has not chosen you to be trained for. Let God do it. Let God determine your shape. That's number one. The word is enough for the wise. Number two, when we say let God do it, to somebody else in the congregation or to somebody who is listening to me, it could be we are saying let God sort you out in his own way. Let him sort you out in his own way. Let God fix area of your life that is broken. Don't fix it yourself. Let God do it. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 8, Isaiah 55, it says, say, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, say the Lord. So God is saying, I have a way of doing things. You have your own way. But here we are saying, Can we allow God to bring out his own way? Let God sort you out. 
What is it that needs to be fixed in your life? Let God fix it. Don't fix it yourself. Is your marriage broken? Let God fix it. Is your career broken? Let God fix it. Let God fix your broken marriage. Don't tell your in-law, your parents, or come and join you to fight your husband or fight your wife. You are not fixing. You are creating more problems. Let God fix it. And to somebody in the house always listening, when we say let God do it, we are saying let God carry your burden. Some of us have been carrying our burden for a long time, so we are tired, running out of the strength. Let God carry your burden. And God is good in carrying burden. Maybe you don't know. In the book of Matthew chapter 11, in verse 26 to 29, Bible says, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and are every laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am weak and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your soul. Jesus said, let me take over your burden. Release it unto me. Your financial burden, let Jesus carry it. Your marital burden, let him carry it. Your career burden, let him carry it. He's good in carrying burden. I think I said it was in the last week or one of my messages that maybe you don't know that the same God that Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac served is the same God we are also serving here. It is the same God. He has not changed. It is the same God. It is the same Jesus. You know, truth doesn't change. Only for keep on changing. That is why men keep on doing experiments because they want to discover new and new things. In heaven, they don't do experiments because everything is clear. So when we talk about the truth, it doesn't change. Jesus is the truth. So he has carried burden before for people. He still carried burden. The reason why some of us are tired, we are worn out, is because we carry our burden. You see some believers, you don't see, you don't see joy. Sister, who are you always from? Ah, you don't know what I'm passing through. Ah, let God carry it. So that instead of you to wear sorrow, you can wear joy. Let God carry your burden for you. Number four. When we say to somebody that, let God do it, we are saying, let God steal your storm. Let God steal your storm because he knows the source of your storm. Storm means troubles. Not trouble. Troubles. I use plural. Some people are facing different kind of trouble. Financial problem, health problem, marital problem, academic problem. Hey, talk about it. Going out problem, coming in problem, vehicle problem, house problem. Some people, the roof of their house is even leaking. Problem everywhere. But God is good in stealing storm. The book of Matthew chapter 8, verse 25 to 26. Matthew chapter 8, verse 25 to 26. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuilt the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. There was a storm as they were traveling, disciples with Jesus. Jesus was having a nice time resting. And so there was a storm. Disciples didn't go to him at the initial stage. They were trying to see the storm. After all, inside the boat, there were experienced fishermen that understood the, with the wind and they understood the sea. We have people like Peter, highly intelligent in fishing. We have people like the son of Sibi, they were there. All oh, these guys, they are very good. They can handle the storm. But this particular storm was a strange storm. They tried to fix it. They tried to steal it. As they were trying to steal it, the storm was raging stronger. They said, wow, let's go and call the master. And Jesus came and he stilled the storm. Maybe you also have been trying to see the storm of your life. But this morning, you have been told, let God do it. Let him see that storm. After all, you don't even know the source. You may be thinking it's your mother-in-law behind it. It may not be your mother. It can even be your father. Let God see the storm. Let God do it. Let him do it. Number five, to somebody, you want to say, let God do it. We are saying, let God promote you. Don't manipulate. Don't play game. Don't advertise yourself. Let God promote you. <laughs> In the book of Psalm 75, verse 6 to 7. Psalm 75, verse 6. The Bible says, For promotion cometh neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put in down one and set up another. Bible says, It's God that promotes, guys. It's God that promotes. Uh, we may thank, we thank God that maybe your friend help you or maybe you, your boss promoted you. It's because God has touched his heart. He will soon discover that the same boss that promoted you actually doesn't like you. <laughs> but the power that greater than him or her fell upon him. The power of Holy Ghost. So he has to promote you. You will soon discover. I have experienced it before. I worked in a particular place many years ago. He took me by like the woman hated me. It was my, it was my boss. She hated me like passion, passionately. She hated me. It, it's just a very strange thing. It, it's like an encounter of David with King Saul. Sometimes Saul will be normal. 
Sometimes Saul will be mad. And one day he became mad and went to kill David. So it's very difficult to handle. So this particular person I was working with, she hated me. But the funniest thing is, whenever I needed financial support, in those days, salary was very little. And I would go to this woman, that was my boy, say, Ah, oh, madam, I, I need financial support. She will always borrow me money. She will always help me. But after departing from the office, she will call people, say, bad thing about me. Ah, this is a serious matter. This is Saul. Normal, abnormal. So I realized that actually she hated me. But because God has decided to use her for me, she couldn't do otherwise. She needed to help me when I came for help. So you may soon discover that those who have promoted you, it was God who used them. Actually, they hated you. So let God promote you. Don't advertise yourself. No manipulate. God is the one that promotes. The Bible says promotion comes from him. Number six, when we say, let God do it. So somebody, it could be we are saying, let God fight your battles. Let God fight for you. <laughs> Don't fight for yourself. You see, sometimes there's a, there's a kind of a temptation to, to fight for yourself, especially when you have been seriously wrong. In the book of 2 Chronicles 20, verse 15, the Bible says, And he said, Akin ye, O Judah, ye inhabitant of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat, don't say the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Go to Israel. I will fight your battle for you. Don't worry yourself. Just, just sit down. Keep on worshiping. I will fight your battle for you. Maybe you are also facing battle. Let God fight your battle for you. I have been having some situation whereby I felt like fighting for myself. But after some time, I realized uh, uh, there was some battle I cannot fight. And I have been in this thing whereby somebody influenced me that we should fight a battle. Let me share that battle for you. It's very interesting. We live in a semi village in those days, in the country where I came from. So, on a particular day, we heard that some criminals, they were going around, breaking into the houses, attacking foreigners, and we were foreigners. So, a brother came to me and said, have you heard, brother said that hey, some criminals are going around, and they are going to come to our compound. Say, ah, so, what do we do? Say, ah, I have a solution. Say, what's the solution? The guy brought out two hammers. He gave me one hammer. He took one. I said, what are we going to do? So, say, when they come. We break their head with hammer. Say, ah, this hammer is heavy. By the time I lift it up, the highest I can do is to hit on one person. But they are crowd. They will finish us. I said, take your hammer. Let us go and pray. Beloved, let God fight your battle for you. And the serious thing is, the criminal never came because God interceded. How many people are going to kill with a hammer? <laughs> Beloved, let God fight your battle for you. He's a man of war. He loves fighting. It's only because you have not allowed him to fight. In Exodus 15, Moses saw God fight. He said, ah, this is a man of war. <laughs> Nobody can resist his strategy. To somebody, and we say, let God do it. We are saying, let God reply your enemy. Those who are speaking evil about you, don't reply them. Let God reply them. Let God do it. Let God do the reply. In the book of 2 Kings, chapter 18, verse 36, 2 Kings, chapter 18, verse 36, the Bible says, but the people heard their peace and answered him not a word. For the king commandment was saying, answer him not. Sennacheribu wrote a letter of threat to Ezekiah the king. He boasted. He talked about his CV in warfare. That like he has defeated so many nations, so many communities. And he's coming to take them to, to captivity. And Ezekiah told people, reply him not. Let God reply. And shortly after that, God replied Sennacheribu. And God really replied him very well because God pronounced judgment upon him. Beloved, maybe you are under the temptation of replying to people, saying evil about you. You see, people that are, sometimes you feel so angry and find it so difficult to not to reply to some people, especially if God has used you for them before. Like friend become an enemy. You want to reply. But let God reply. Don't keep on going around and saying, I heard you said this about me. I've come to reply. You are wasting your time. When God replies, he replies very well. Let God do it. Let God reply your neighbor. Who is saying evil about you? After all, you have helped him to save his dog. Sometimes they go. Maybe I have been so kind to him. Let God reply him. Let God reply your colleague. Like he's saying evil about you. Don't reply them. Let God reply your in-law. Who is blackmailing you? Don't reply them. Let God reply that your uncle. Like you have even paid his school fees for his children. Let God reply. When God replied, God replied very well. Let God do it. 
God do it. And finally, to somebody, when we say, let God do it, we are saying, let God establish his word in your life by himself. Let God fulfill his promises he has made concerning you by himself. Don't help him to bring his word into fulfillment. Let God do it. After all, he has spoken. He will do it. He doesn't need your help. In the book of First Samuel, chapter 1, verse 23, First Samuel, chapter 1, verse 23, and Elkanah, her husband, said unto her, Do what she may do good. Tarry until thou have win him. Only the Lord establish his word. Another uh, interpretation says, Let God establish his word. <laughs> That's a powerful statement. Elkanah told Hannah. Say, okay, do whatever that is right, but never, never try to bring to fulfillment the word of God. Don't tamper with it. Let God establish his word. Beloved, maybe God has given you promises. He will fulfill it. Because that was the problem of Abraham and Sarah. You know the story. Genesis chapter 16. God gave them a word. I will give you a song. And at a point, Sarah came with prayer. Say, hmm, the way I see, the way things are going. <laughs> uh, Mr. Abraham, the way things are going. I think uh, God didn't help. He said, we give us a song. And we already hold. Let's try to see how to help ourselves. And they mess it up. And they produce Ishmael. All today, Ishmael is still alive. So, you also, as a child of God, let God do it. If God has given you a promise, if you fulfill it, you don't need to manipulate. You don't need to, you don't need to play game. Let him do it. Let him fulfill his word. By the grace of God, the grace to let God do it shall come upon you today. In the name of Jesus. You will mess up your life. In the name of Jesus. You will not fail you. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. And those who are waiting for you to mess up, to take advantage of you, they will wait in vain. But God will sustain you. God will guide you. In the name of Jesus. Okay. The second part. The question now is, okay, pastor, you say let God do it. Okay. How can you let God do it? An interesting question. Okay, what, what do I do so that I will let God do it? You say I shouldn't fight for myself? Okay, oh, that's good. You say I shouldn't try to bring into fulfillment the promises of God? It sounds good. You even said this morning that uh, where I should let God fight for me. Okay, how will I let God do it? How will I live my life? So that I will let God do it. So that I will not be doing this myself. Because the strength is limited. The wisdom is minimal. Even the vision is not clear. We don't know much. You go to the Bible. We don't know much. Paul said we only see like a poor reflection in the mirror. But at the renewal of everything, that in the second coming of Jesus, everything shall be clear. But for now, we are still having a lot of a lack of clarity. We don't know, we don't, we don't know much. I've said it before. No matter how knowledgeable you are, there will always be things you don't know. <laughs> you can be a professor of mathematics, but that doesn't mean you know geography. You don't even know, you don't even know my, my, my father's language. You don't know everything. You don't even know my thoughts. As I'm looking at you, you don't know what I'm thinking about. No matter how knowledgeable you are, there will always be things you don't know, whether it's a God or knowing. So, what can you do so that you can let God do it? It's important. Number one, it's a recommendation. But if you go home, you study it more, God begin to minister to you so that you can change the direction of your life. Some of us, we have used human wisdom. We have messed it up. Good destiny. Number one, stay still until God tells you to move. <laughs> stay still until God tells you to move. You know what it means? Do nothing until God tells you what to do. <laughs> Most of mistakes are very costly. Stay still until God tells you to move. The book of Exodus chapter 14, in verse 13 to 15. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians who ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cry unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Here, God and Moses spoke. The two are connected. Moses was the first to speak. He told people, stand still. Because we don't know what to do. Then after that, God came and said, now I will tell you what to do. Go forward. Which means, do nothing until you are told what to do. 
Don't take action until you are sure of God's leading. Very important. <laughs> you don't act until you know what to do. I mean, it's reasonable. I mean, what should you, okay, where are you going? He said, I don't know. You are a dangerous person there. So, if you want God to do it in your life, you must learn how not to act until God tells you what to do. Because you may mess it up. You may mess it up. From destiny, I've been frustrated. From destiny, I've been complicated. Because somebody has acted without being told to heart. Don't mess up your destiny. I'm praying for you. And only God is praying for you. The grace to be patient with God. He shall locate you. In the name of Jesus. You don't know what to do. Why do you have to do things? God has not told you. You are not sure God is leading. Say, I'm just saying, uh, I'm just have to do something. You have to do something, but we have to do something reasonable. You can't say you have to do something and you set your heart on fire. Number two, we are talking about how do you let God do it? Number two, do only what you can do and let God do what only you can do. Hmm, that's number two. Make it a lifestyle. That you are working with God in the affair of your life. You will only do what you can only do. And you will not do what only God can do. You have limited strength. <laughs> James 2, 17. Even so faith, if that not war, is dead, being alone. Which means you need to do something. But John 5, 17. But Jesus answered them, my father walked here either and I walked. So Jesus said, God walked. So God also will do something. So in the affair of your life, there are two sets of work. One for you to do. One for God to do. You will know. I mean, you are looking for a job. You can write application. You can do that one. Do what you can do. But don't do what only God can do. There are things you can do. But there are things you cannot do. Unless you are deceiving yourself. I have some people that boast a lot. So far, I laugh. Say this one. This one. All these things. Just close the nose tree. Five minutes. It's gone. This one is boasting. You don't know me. Who are you? Go and ask about me. Go to the, all the country in Africa. They will tell you. Oh, but it's not Africa. This is Europe. You are not even the Washington. So you must do only, only what you can do. Let God do those things that only you can do. Only God can touch the heart of a man, brethren. Don't try to make anybody to like you. It's not going to happen. It's fake. Don't have to impress anybody. Well, some people, the more you try to impress, the more they hate you. Somebody say, you know, I just hate that lady. Why do you hate her? See all the, all the makeup she does just to look beautiful. <laughs> She's not serious. And you are trying to impress him that you are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm praying for you. <laughs> the grace not to compete with God over the affair of your life shall locate you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number three. We are talking about how can you let God do it? Number three. Cease from worry. That's number three. Cease from worry. Make it a lifestyle. But you not worry. If you want God to do it, don't worry about it. Why? Because when you begin to worry about it, you are going to be tempted to do it. Because worry will set you up. As you begin to see, God, that will begin to show you the picture of impossibility. The picture of deception that if you do nothing now, things are going to be out of control, do something now, and you don't even know what to do. From there, you mess it up. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything ye, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. When you see from worry, peace of God shall be established in your heart. You need peace, brethren. That's a, that's a guy in the Bible, Peter. He did something very interesting. Out of Apostles, chapter 12, verse 6. And when error will have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keeper before the door kept the prison. Peter was on moon, on trouble in prison. He knew error put him in prison to cut his head off. But the guy was sleeping. He was having a nice rest in prison. In the midst of soldiers watching over him so that they can cut his head, he was sleeping. That's a beautiful thing, brethren. He was not even worried. Ah. 
And the guy knew they are going to cut his head tomorrow. He was just having a nice sleep. I, I, I want that kind of grace. He just sleep. Some of you, I don't know your problem. They say, ah, Pastor, you can't understand. Uh, since 2 o'clock, I've been, I, I, I couldn't sleep. What's your problem? Are you the president of the whole world? Go and sleep! <laughs> when you sit from worry about it, go and take over. I used to have a friend, I think I was discussing, uh, I was discussing yesterday, it wasn't yesterday or two days ago. I have a deal with somebody. I used to have a brother in the Lord. This guy was a medical doctor. I never knew he had that problem until he came to our church to preach and he said that he believed that if you don't worry about anything in life, you are not serious. So he believed that to show the seriousness, you need to worry. He said he enjoyed worry to the extent that when he was about to sleep on his bed, he asked himself a question. Have you worried about anything today? If his answer was no, he said he will start to worry. He will start to worry. Until God said you are in bondage. <laughs> are you also in that kind of spirit? Today you are delivered. In the name of Jesus. You won't live a life of worry anymore. You will let God do it so you can sleep and sleep like a small baby. That shall be your portion <laughs> in the name of Jesus. These some people, they look like a terrorist. I think they're going to they carry bomb. They need to what, what's, what's going on here? Say, no, anybody tell me nothing. I blow them up. What's the problem? I have not paid my rent. So what has it got to do with people? They have not paid your rent. It's worried about it. But devil is telling him, they will soon throw you on the street. Number four. How do you let God do it? How? Number four. Position your mind accordingly. That's number four. Very important. Position your mind accordingly. If you want to let God do it in your life, you must learn how to put your mind under control of the Holy Ghost. Because as a man thinking, so easy. Unfortunately, you can't do beyond what you are thinking. So if you allow your mind to be crowded, and to begin to malfunction, you are going to also act negatively. If you are going to let God do it, you need to work upon your mind. Position your mind accordingly. Position your mind in a way that you will let God do it. Because your mind is like a market. It's a battlefield for the devil. Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he think in his heart, so easy. Your thought determines your action. Believe it or not, your thought determines your action. So, if you are going to let God do it, you must learn how to renew your mind continually. Because as situations are unfolding, devil will take advantage to mess up your mind. Put a terrible thought in your mind that will push you to hurt negatively. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of God. It's an interesting verse. That you need to spend the whole of your day to read. Say, be not conformed to this world. That is, do not analyze situation the way people they will analyze. You are believers. You are not part of the world. Don't think the way they think. Don't reason the way they reason. Don't imagine the way they imagine. They are people of the world. They have no shepherd. You have a shepherd. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed in the renew of your mind. Renew of the mind. You can see renewing, I N G Hendy, is a continuous something. Say, so I've renewed my mind. You have to continue. Why? Because as the situation are unfolding, devil will bring different thoughts into your mind and imagination. And you, know, you have to shut it off continually. It will be a continual thing. For example, for example, you are looking for a job. And you have been praying to God. God opened the door. Suddenly, God opened the door. Devil will tell you. They won't give you that job. But you need to shop like that. Devil, you are a liar. And you apply. Devil will say, don't apply. You know you are black. They are looking for white. But it's not in the application. Uh, advertisement. Uh, your friend, your neighbor. Who was also black like you. He, had, he did interview. He was not giving. You need to shop it up. Now, I'm not my neighbor. Not that I'm not my friend. I'm, my, I'm a unique person. Individual. As you go for interview, eventually, they call you for interview. Devil call me. That guy is like a goat. Some of you have lived in the village. Your goat is very stubborn. You beat a goat now. I want to hit your food. He's going to stand at a distance. Looking at him. Maybe you are going to do so I can come back again to hit your food. So, as you say, I'm going to pass the interview. You went for the interview. You have done the interview again. Even while you are doing the interview, devil will be telling you. Ah, that, your accent is bad. They won't give you this job. 
You need to tell yourself, you are a liar. They will give me. After you have done the interview, and they say, okay, we are going to write you, and you are going home, they will come again. You see the way they look at you, they won't give you the job. Ah, devil, you are a liar. They will give me the job. And you are still waiting for the letter to come. Eventually, the letter came. As you are taking the letter, you have not even opened. They will say, they are saying it's no job. You have not even opened the letter. Say, you are a liar. And you open the letter, that is a job. They are, <laughs> they are deceiving you. When you resume, they will just fire you. You see, this guy never tired. So, the Bible says, renew your mind. Continually, you must fight negative thought. So it has to be not something you do want. Continually. You must keep on fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting. They will leave you alone. Bible says, receive the devil. So if you are going to let God do it, you must learn how to position your mind such that God will do it. So that you will let God do it. When devil wants to mess up your mind, you need to tell yourself, hey, my mind, come, come and take it rightly. I'm praying for you. The grace to think godly. In no situation, shall come on you in the name of Jesus. Number five, we are talking about how to let God do it. How to position yourself so that you will no longer be struggling with God. You will let him do it. You will be patient. It is very sorrowful, brethren, when somebody misses testimony, a miracle, just a few hours before the miracle. It's not a good thing. It is very painful that somebody has been waiting for three, four, five years and just last minute. Just last minute, he walk away. It's not good. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. I've seen people miss their miracles. I've seen it. It's not a good thing. So it's an important thing we are talking about today. You must let God do it. Number five. So let God do it. Come to God with an open mind. <laughs> open mind. You know the meaning of open mind? Open mind means you have not made any decision. On this matter, you are open to whatever God says. No preconception, no preconception, no, 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 nothing. No, you are just innocent, open mind. Whatever God says, we do. The book of John, chapter 2, verse 5. John 2, 5 say, His mother say unto the servant, Whatsoever he say unto you, do it. That's a powerful statement. You only read it, you don't even meditate on it. The one God finished in the party. <laughs> And the servants that are serving the food, they came to Mary there. <laughs> when it's finished, though. And Mary told them, just like we sort you out, but one condition, whatsoever he tells you, you must do. Which means, even when Jesus gives you unreasonable advice, follow it. Open mind. And you read that story very well, John chapter 2. Actually, we thank God for the servant because Jesus started with unreasonable counsel. He told them, how many pots do you have? Hey, we have pot. Go and pour water inside. They never told Jesus that water got finished. They told him why got finished. They would have got angry. Ah, what is this nonsense? Why is he mocking us? We said okay, wine got finished. Said we should go and pour water inside the pot. This thing, John. Let's go. But the water turned to wine. <laughs> so whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Which means come to God with an open mind. You are looking for a husband. Pray to God with an open mind. <laughs> Don't already have somebody in mind. Because then we show you a picture. You see you and your you and that person at the altar with the white garment and you with a nice suit. Being done together. Ah, God has spoken. It's not God, it's your inner emotion. You see? When you talk about revelation or the thought or dream, there are three sources. Devil can show you a dream, God can show you a dream. Your inner emotion can show you a dream. What you have been thinking about before. What you have been imagining can come as a dream to you. Yeah. Many destiny have been frustrated or truncated because somebody received a revelation from inner emotion. What he had been thinking about over the years. Suddenly a dream. Hey, God has spoken. It's not God. Inner emotion. So when you come to God, you must come to open mind. Tell, tell yourself, whatever he say I should do, I will do. Open mind. That's that's beautiful. Many years ago, a lady came to me some years ago and said, Pastor, thank God for you have been praying with me. Now, I've got an husband to marry. I said, mm, you have not got husband. You have got somebody proposing you. Say yes. So, who is that person? And she told me so many stories about that person. The way she was talking about, when she was talking, it's not that man. 
So after she finished advertising, you know, people know how to convince you when they want you to tell them what they want to hear. She told me a lot of things. Ah, that guy, <laughs> nice guy, good job, responsible, very caring. Ah, he always calling me, check on me. I said, okay, can we pray? So I made a simple prayer that the lady didn't like. I said, God, if it is your will that this, my sister, should marry that man, build the relationship. If it's not your will, today, before this prayer hand, separate them. So after the prayer, the lady laughed. So why are you laughing here? <laughs> We only talk every day. Say, okay. Let me hand over to the Holy Spirit. So she went. After s- a month, she came and said, Pastor, it has happened. I said, what happened? The guy ran away. I said, praise God. How can you say praise God? How can he run away? He's, he's not devil. He's not your husband. <laughs> and shortly after that, a real man came. You see, you need to come to God with an open mind. You don't begin to imagine that maybe this is my wife. Otherwise, you begin to have a revelation and dream. Seeing two of you being joined together at the altar. He's a devil. I'm praying for you. The grace to walk God and open mind. The Lord will give you. In the name of Jesus. You won't dictate to God anymore. In the name of Jesus. You shall not fall into the deception of the devil. In the mighty name of Jesus. That's number five. Number six. I'll give you plenty up to number nine. Because if I go beyond number nine, you have to pay. And you don't want to pay. So I tell me God gives the one that is free. The rest are not free. I won't give you. Number six. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Number six. Choose to surrender to God's will, even if it is unpleasant. You want God to do it? Tell yourself, I will surrender to the will of God, even if it is not pleasant. I will. Matthew chapter 26, verse 39. Bible says, and he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, say, oh my father, if it be possible, let this go apart from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. This is a man, the Lord Jesus, who has decided to let God do it. Beloved, may I tell you this, and you need to be aware of that. It's a good thing to know the will of God. But you must also understand that it's not every time that the will of God will make you happy. Sometimes you know the will of God, you begin to weep. It's not every time. Like, ah, ah, for my life, I know the will of God. Say, do you know what you're talking about? It is the will of God that Jesus should die on the cross. It is easy to die on the cross. Even when Jesus saw what was coming, say, ah, God, if it's possible. That is the will of God to die on the cross. It's not easy. You see, when, when, when Jonah, God told him to go to Nineveh, that was the will of God. He ran away. When God told Moses that Moses, I'm going to use you to, as a deliverer, say, me, look for another person. It's not every time that you know the will of God, you are going to rejoice. Sometimes you know the will of God, you begin to cry. Say, why me? Why me? Why me, God? The lady was praying for her husband. She was an accountant in the company. She lived in the court at a big, beautiful house. And she had a gate man. She was already ripe to marry. And she prayed, prayed, prayed. Holy Ghost fear, sound in the law. And she heard the voice clearly. Your gate is your husband. They said, no way! Therefore, I bind you. And she went forward. Talk to all the men of God around. Said, your gate man is your husband. Ah! This is derogatory. You know how people have read so many books. This is an insult. This is an embarrassment. I mean, this is, I would like to tell my, my colleague, fellow directors, that I married a gate man. Your gate man is your husband. It's not every time that you know the will of God, you rejoice. Sometimes you know the will of God, you begin to cry. One of our pastors, senior pastor, was sharing with us a few days ago. He said, she was praying to God for husband, for wife. And God showed him the person to marry. Say, it's not possible. He said, he told God, that God, I can't love her. And I don't love her. I will never love her. <laughs> then she told God, I can't love this kind of a person. There is no way. I will never, never, never. And he said, later on, God spoke to other pastors. They were not calling. God revealed to us, you. That sister is your wife. It's not possible. Until God began to speak, God now told our pastor that, okay, I will help you to love her. May God help you to love the thing that God wants you to love. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you never walk out of the purpose of God in the mighty name of Jesus. So if you are going to let God do it, you must choose how to surrender to the will of God, even if it is not pleasant. Number seven, 
How do you live your life? You can let God do it. Let God sort you out. Trust God for provision and completion. Trust God. Trust is a situation of mind. Trust God for provision and completion. To let God do it will require that you will trust him that he will provide all that you need to succeed in that particular project. You need to trust him that he will complete what he has started. If he has started healing, he will complete it. Uh -uh. Trust him for that. Philippians 4 verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. It is God that shall supply all your need, not yourself. Not you. You, what do you have? You have nothing. <laughs> you are born empty. Yeah. It's God that will supply all your needs, not you, not your cousin, not your uncle. God may use anybody, but don't look around and say, <laughs> maybe it's God I want to use. You don't need to be doing that. You don't need to be calling there. I just want to share with you my problem. Maybe God wants to use you. You don't need to do that. Let God do it by himself. If you are going to let God do it, you need to trust him. He will supply all your needs. If he's the one that is sending to university, he will supply the resources. I think you still remember the testimony in this church. Or something three years ago. Of one of our brothers came from Nigeria to come and study medicine here. He came with scholarship. I'm aware of that. He came to the University of Bristol here. He came with he came with scholarship to study medicine. And uh, the wicked people that gave him scholarship in Nigeria, after he spent two years, they told him the money is finished. So what am I going to do? It's a six-year program. I'm just in yes, the money is finished. So what should I do? They said the only thing you can do is to come back to Nigeria. Ah, you are wicked. Say hey, the money is finished. You are going, you are not going to give money anymore. How can money finish? It's government scholarship. How can money finish? Say hey, the money is finished. It was like a joke. They didn't pay him. And he kept on. He told the university, I will pay. I will pay. He kept on with the program. And they allow him, believing that after all, they have received letter from the government in Nigeria that are going to pay his scholarship. So those who here they trusted the government. They didn't know that they are different kind of government. <laughs> uh, eventually, <laughs> our brother was going 36,000 pounds to pay. And it was in final year. And he said, what do I do? God will make a way. Ah! So the university told him, now you have graduated. But because you are with us, we will keep the certificate. Go all over the world, go and look for money. Come and collect your certificate. Ah, we started praying. We started praying. That very day, that my brother was having 10 pounds last cash in his pocket. And we have a men's program in the church. And he came to this church, he was sitting there. And it was time for the offering with weeping. He put in the last 10 pounds. This is the last money. He put the 10 pounds there. And he went home. And the following week, the university called him. That we have decided, the board has met, the uh, governor, whatever they have met, and they have decided that the money you are owing us, we want to count it as part of our bad debt. Therefore, get your certificate and go. And what I see working to today, <laughs> it's in the UK. You know, God did a good job. When you believe that God will do it, and you have a trust that He will complete what He has started, don't reason it out. How is it going to be? He's the Almighty. <laughs> And uh, if you go down to Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, he says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it. That is, God will complete what he has started in your life. Yeah. If he has started healing your body, he will complete it. Uh, how can God operate a man and the person will die in his hand? It's not going to, be possible. It's not going to happen. Yes. God will operate your, 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 your body and you will die in his hand. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Like, that is the black melee. Even some good doctors, it doesn't really happen to, be, to them. So, if God has taken something in your life, He will complete it. It doesn't matter how terrible things are appearing. As long as you are sure this thing was started by God, He will complete it. So, you need to trust Him in your heart that whatever God has started, He will complete and will supply all the provision. Let it be established in your heart. That is where the peace comes from. I decree concerning you the grace to trust God unchangeably, to trust God permanently, to trust God without looking back. That grace shall locate you in the name of Jesus. Number eight, how do you let God do it? How? Very interesting. 
Be humble <laughs> before God. That's number eight. I'm, I'm very humble. Are you sure? I'm talking about humility in a different form. You see, if you are going to let God do it, you must learn how to pocket your wisdom and let God put his own wisdom into operation in your life. Some of us we are too wise that God cannot bless us anymore. That one sounds very strange. When you come before God, you need to learn how to pocket your wisdom. All your experience, all your technicality, whatever, expertise, you need to pocket it and let God unfold his own way of doing things. If you are going to let God do it, that's humility. Don't come before God and say, well, I know how to handle it. Why do you come? Those who ask for the way are those who don't know the way. When you believe you know how to do it, you won't ask how to do it anymore. Philippians 2, verse 5 to 7. Let this man be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who be in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. The secret of success in Jesus was his humility. Don't forget, he came with the glory. But you pocketed it. So the name of God shall be exalted. You want God to do it for you? You need to learn how to pocket your wisdom. Some of us, we are so big in our own eyes, you cannot even be cancer. I mean, I have a friend before. Somebody came for cancelling. He was actually cancelling me. Some years ago, a couple they were fighting. And the husband called me to come. And I went there. I won't forget that encounter. I remember. I got to their house around 7 p.m. in the night. And the husband started talking about what happened. You won't believe what I want to tell you, but it's the truth. And he started talking from 7 p.m. Around, I, I, I went around 7.30, quarter past 7 in the night. The man started talking. When he talked, up to 12 in the night, for more than five hours, I was not praying my heart, God, give me wisdom to escape from this place. How do I escape here? Just help me. Which reason am I going to apply? This is serious. The man kept on talking, kept on talking, kept on talking. He was even cancelling me about marriage. He called me to come and sort out issue in their marriage. He was cancelling me. I had to live with a woman. He kept on talking, kept on talking. For about five hours, when we were going to have past to say, God will help us, sir. God will help us, sir. The Lord will do it. The Lord will put our head into shame. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> I think everything is very madam. I think everything is very clear. Nothing is clear. I, say, I still have to go. I still have to go. That's how I escape. You see, when you go to a counselor and you have to cancel the counselor, your case is complicated. Psalm 131, verse 1 to 3. Bible says, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matter. For in thing too high for me, surely I have behaved and quieted myself. As a child that is wind of his mother, my soul is even as a wind child. Let Easter open the law from end for and forever. David said, there's no proud thought in me. My heart is not haughty. You need to humble yourself. You don't got to do it. <laughs> because sometimes God wants to do it to do somebody in your life. Don't boss people around and raise children. <laughs> you need to calm down. Pocket your wisdom. That's the wisdom. Pocket your wisdom. Hear the wisdom of others in the multitude of counselors. That's safety. Pocket your wisdom. Don't try to cancel the counselor. <laughs> Let God do it. The grace to be humble before God. May he rest on you. In the name of Jesus. Number nine, the last one. Wait until God makes everything beautiful in your situation. If you are going to let God do it, you need to learn how to wait until God makes everything beautiful in that situation. What does he mean? In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11, the Bible says he has made everything beautiful in his time. He made everything beautiful. You need to learn how to wait until God makes everything beautiful. What does he mean? You need to wait for God to perfect what he has started in your life. When God opens a door for you, you come across challenges. Don't force the door open. Let God perfect it. Wait until God make everything beautiful. Everything is beautiful when you don't need to struggle to take over what God has given you. You don't need to manipulate. You don't need to manipulate. You don't need to deceive. You don't need to turn things around negatively. You wait until God make everything beautiful. 
We have a good example in the Bible before we pray. David was anointed to be a king in Israel, but his soul was still on power. And many times, at least twice, David had the privilege to kill Saul. After all, he was a mad king, rejected by God. But David didn't execute judgment that God has not put in his hand. He waited until God himself eliminated Saul. Truly, God has opened a door of enthronement for David through the anointing. But the door is not yet perfected. When it's perfected, there will be no opposition. He will go in without committing sin. So God might have opened a door for you, but if you need to struggle and struggle and manipulate to enter, it means you need to wait. God has not perfected it. Let him perfect it. Wait for your time. Wait until God will make everything beautiful. If that is the will of God, it shall stand. Beloved, I pray for you. You won't blow your destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus. What God wants on your life, you won't hinder it. In the name of Jesus Christ, God will strengthen you. He will give you wisdom. He will give you patience. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will not fall to the trouble of the wicked. You won't fall to deception. You won't fall to the trouble of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will do it in your life. You will allow him to do it in your life. What he has started, he will finish it. And you will mess up your destiny. In the name of Jesus. Then your feet and let us pray. Those of you who are watching on it, we want to pray now. Let God do it. Tell somebody, let God do it. We are going to pray. But before we pray, maybe you are here today, or you are hearing me online, you have not given your life to Jesus. In fact, God won't do anything. The only thing God can do now is to save you before you can now go into the journey. So maybe you are here this morning, you are not giving your life to Jesus, or you are giving your life to Jesus, but you have backslid. Yeah, it's not something like it's strange that you backslid. People have done it before, but with the wisdom, they have come back to God again. You also can come back to God again. So why all the hearts are closed? If you're in that situation, I want to pray for you. Don't raise up your hand. I'll just pray for you. And those of you who are watching online, if in that particular category, I want to pray for you. Father, in the name that's above every other name, your children watching online and those who are here, any of them who have not given their life to Jesus, Father, save their soul today. You save my soul. Save their soul also in the name of Jesus. Any of them who have backslid, Father, restore them in the name of Jesus. And let your grace sustain them. They will not fall again. No? For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. You are going to pray. You say, Father, help me to let you do it, your work in my life. Tell him, Father, help me so that we let you do your work in my life. I want to, I, don't let me hinder your work. Tell God, Father, help me. Help me to permit you to do your work in my life. Help me not to hinder your hand. Help me. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Father, help me, help me, help me, help me. Help me, Lord, so that I will permit you to do your work in my life. I don't want to hinder you. Kerila Baba, Karibo Shen Keribo, Ekerebo Shen Keribo Shen Kalabata. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You say, Father, help me to cooperate with you in whatever you want to do in my life. Help me, I want to cooperate with you. I want to be partnership with you. Partnership in progress. Ekekekeke. Help me, help me, help me, help me, Lord. Help me to cooperate with you in all you want to do in my life. Help me to cooperate with you. Help me. Help me, Lord. Father, help me to cooperate with you in all you will do in my life. Karibo, ribo, shenke, rike. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You say, Father, in all that concern me, let only your will be done. Only your will. Yeah, only your will shall be done. Not my will. Not the will of my parents. Not the will of my spouse. Not the will of my children. Not the will of my pastor. Let only your will be done. Yeah, Baba, shenke, ribo, Father, in all that concern me, let only your will be done. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Here's the last one. I want to pray. Say, Father, any demonic urge or demonic influence to make me to hurt negatively yeah, concerning each of my life. Father, today, deliver me from it. Pray that any demonic urge, any demonic influence, that will make it to hurt negatively and destroy my good testimony. Father, deliver me, deliver me. Father, any demonic urge, any demonic influence that will make me to mess up my destiny. Father, deliver me from it today. Help me, help me, Lord. Father, deliver us from every manner of demonic influence, demonic urge to mess up our destiny. Help us that we not fall into it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want to give you a few chance. I want to give you about three seconds. Talk to God. What is it you want God to do in your life? Take go. 
I'll give you one minute before we share the grace. Take go. What is it that you want God to do? What is it that you want God to do? Tell him. I was talking about let God do it. So the question is, what do you want God to do for you? <laughs> tell him, tell him. Keribo shenke riba. Karibo ribo shenke rikeke. Hera baba shemburo bo shenka rike rike. Kehira baba shenka ribo bo shenke rike rike shenka labata. We surrender our law. Visit our destiny. Visit our life. Transform everything to your own glory. In the name of Jesus. Prosper greatly. Glorify yourself in the above of our life. Help us in all our limitations. Hera baba shenke ribo. Ke rike ke shenka labata. Enlarge our coast. Empower to take over more territory. Let me make effort for you. I want to be, to, be, to, be, to be patient with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. I have a to pray for someone in our midst here. I don't know whether you are here or you are watching online. Let's have it quiet. That person is suffer from palpitation of the heart. I don't know for how long it has been going. Palpitation of the heart. That's the way I receive it. I just want to pray for healing. Father, in the name that is above every other name, this is your child or your children suffering from palpitation of the heart. I speak healing to their heart. In the name of Jesus, whatever enemy is using to cause this particular sickness or problem in their life, today, let it be destroyed. In the name of Jesus. So, that person receives healing to your heart. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. By this type of Jesus, I declare you are healed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever malfunction in your body, Today is removed. No more malfunctioning in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Someone in our midst here, or you are watching online, I could see that you are starting to enter into a door, and somebody stretch his hand that won't let you enter. The good news is, whenever, whenever a person stretch his hand that will not let you go, he can only hinder you within the limit of his hand. And so I want to pray for you. Father, in the name that is above every other name, this is your child or your children. That enemy is stretching his hand that will not let him pass or her pass. Father, put the enemy to shame. In the name of Jesus. You are the one that opened this door. Father, perfect it. In the name of Jesus. Put the enemy to shame. Make way for your children. We bless your name and we worship you. Blessed be your holy name. And I pray for that person that I miss this morning or that is hearing me now. What God has done in your life, the Lord will complete. In the name of Jesus. You will not hinder his hand. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will visit you. That person will saying, where is the way? God will make a way. In the name of Jesus. He will lead you aright. In the name of Jesus. And you will not be put to shame. Those who are threatening you, the Lord will answer them. The Lord will fight for you. Your peace shall be permanent. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I appreciate God. I appreciate God. I appreciate God. Just appreciate God. Just appreciate God. Father, we give all the glory. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy. Thank you. Thank you for today. You have blessed us indeed. Thank for all the verses you have given to this service. Bless all of us to your own glory. Bless your children. Bless our way. As we go to the new we journey with us. When we come back again, let our testimony be full. Be full. When Jesus name we pray, let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, all the of our life, shall dwell in the heart of the Lord. Forever and forever. Amen. Hallelujah.